what I have here is an old sewing machine that was my grandmother's sewing machine. I believe it is from 1958. The older the machine, the better, as far as I'm concerned. And this is a slightly more modern machine uh, that I've had since I think the 90s. And it's your base, pretty basic machine that has been great for me for when I need to take it places. It's very transportable, very easy to put in a cupboard somewhere. Uh, this one's a bit heavier and so I keep it in this sewing table all the time. When you sew by hand, the needle goes all the way through the fabric and then all the way through again. And, then, and it's one thread, one line of thread that goes back and forth. In a machine, a machine can't do that. Uh, it's got to hold on to the needle uh, the whole time. So it's got an upper thread and a lower thread called the bobbin. The, the thread is threaded through the point of the needle rather than the back of the needle like a hand sewing needle. So it just goes up and down and up and down and up and down, constantly looping with that bottom thread uh, to link the material that you're sewing together. Are the links too far on top or too far on the bottom? Um, you figure out how to adjust either the top thread or the bottom thread based on that. So every machine, uh, whatever kind you have, has a place for your top tool. It has a knob, usually on this side, um, that moves the needle up and down. This one has a power switch. Um, this one is just always on if it's plugged in, so I keep it plugged into a power strip. And, but it does have a switch for this light. And even though this is a very old machine, I was able to get a nice new LED light bulb to fit into it. It has a place to connect your power cord, which is usually also connected to a foot pedal. And you're going to have dials for selecting what kind of stitch you want to use. And if you have an electronic machine, you may just have buttons and a screen um, that shows you which stitches you have to choose from and you just push buttons. This machine's upper thread tension is on this dial at the top, right here on this machine. and then you also have something to select the length of your stitches. That's here on this machine. And it is here on this machine. Well, this one has a dial for selecting um, if you want your needle aligned to the left, center, or right. So on this machine, it's a lever, nice red lever. Now, you're also going to have a place for your lower bobbin thread. On this machine, it's down here in the base. In this one, you have to remove the tray that is up for storage. And this bobbin goes in, it's not laying horizontally, it's in vertical. And there's a bobbin holder. So it has a little lever so I can pull it out. And the actual bobbin spool sits inside that bobbin holder. And adjust the tension with a little screw on this bobbin holder or tiny little screw uh, where the spool, uh, bobbin uh, fits into the lower part of your machine here. Your machine also has a presser foot and a lever somewhere, usually on the back of, mach of the machine, to raise and lower the presser foot. So the moral of the story is hold on to your owner's manual because that gives you a map to all these parts or just download one off the internet. So now let's thread the bobbin spool. The way we wind this, the bobbin so you're going to put it on the, uh, the bobbin winder on your machine. It may be on the front or the top. You load the spool of thread and you're going to thread it through a guide of some sort and then over to the bobbin. I wrap it around the bobbin a few times so that it uh, stays in place. Put it into position and I unlock the wheel so that the needle won't go up and down while I step on the presser foot and the bobbin begins to wind really quickly. 
put a finger on the spool just to keep it in place. And when it's almost done, a guide on your machine may stop it from spinning, but you can stop it anytime before it gets too full. Snip it. And now I put the spools on the machine so that the thread is at the, coming out at the back of the spool. And same with the bobbin. I'm going to drop it in so that the thread is in the back going left. I drop it in and then there's a groove you're going to need to pull the thread into and you're going to close the top. Check your owner's manual for how your machine does this. Now every machine has you thread it through some kind of guide again and then through the discs that control the tension of the thread and then through a lever that raises and lowers the thread as the needle goes up and down and then through a couple other guides uh, that keep the thread in place on its way down to the needle. I like to put the presser foot down at this point so you can access the hole at the very end of the needle. And when you thread it, you're going to send that thread through a groove in the presser foot so that it can go underneath the presser foot. And I also check the tension. Uh, you should be able to pull it uh, and the thread should slide fairly smoothly. If it's too tight, you may need to adjust the tension. And then I slowly bring the needle down and back up again so that it grabs the bobbin thread and then I use a tool to pull that bobbin thread out. Now the machine is ready to sew. So I have two pieces of material that I put under the presser foot and I line it up so that I have so that my seam allowance will be the width that I need it to be. Take a couple stitches and then I back stitch. Your machine may have a button or a lever or something to allow you to go in reverse for a couple of stitches. So that locks the stitching in and I do it again at the end of the row. It's like tying a knot. Pull it out and I could either snip it with a scissors or there's usually a thread cutter on the back of the machine conveniently. And then you want to check to make sure the tension was good. If it's puckering, it may have been too tight or the stitches may have been too short. If you tug on the seam and the stitches spread apart too much, it, it, the tension was probably too loose. You would adjust the tension here or the stitch length here on this machine. Now you might want to select a zigzag stitch to zigzag down the seam allowance to prevent fraying and give your seam a bit more strength. So I selected a zigzag with the stitch selector and the width with the lever that controls how far to the side the needle goes. And I could use the stitch length adjuster as well to get a tighter zigzag. But this will help if your material starts to fray over time after it goes through the washing machine. Zigzags are also nice with stretchy material because they can stretch. So that's how to sew a seam. Now if you wanted to hem something, all you have to do is turn it over once and press it. I'm just doing a finger pressing here. Fold it again and press it. You could use an iron uh, to get a, a, a tighter crease. And then I'm just going to straight stitch close to the fold, the, the top fold. Select the right length for your type of material. And you probably have a guide in your owner's manual, manual for stitch length or stitch types or tension levels for different types of material. I could snip it again with the scissors, but again, 
just going to use the thread cutter on the back. And there's our hem that you might put at the bottom of a pair of pants or a skirt or a top. That's how the machine works. Next, I'll show you how to sew in a zipper.